I will um, focus on three main uh, subsections of uh, my presentation. The one is derived very much from my capacity or my heart as a professor at the university that is a teacher. So I'll give you a small, a small lecture about things that you probably know about what is sludge and what are the problems uh, around sludge. The second will be more from my experience as an administrator. In my capacity as three years, I was a secretary for water with the Minister of Environment, dealing with all water-related issues and coordinating all the competent authorities, and of course, uh, having to do also under my responsibility the Edmund West Coast Directive and the Sludge uh, Directive. And the third will be a kind of wrap-up, something I also like to talk as a practitioner, which means what what uh, does it take to implement it in, in terms of uh, additional uh, uh, costs, additional uh, technologies, and additional sludge treatment. So, going to the first one, Greece is facing the same problem as the rest of Europe. Here I have something about the 15 member state, because as you see it's a bit dated, the, the data up to 2005, uh, which shows an increase in the sludge produced in the European uh, Union. It has reached now, I think, about 10 million, uh, uh, 10 million uh, tons of uh, dry soils uh, per year all over the Europe. In Greece, we are about 1.5% of that, about 150,000 uh, tons uh, a year. And so, as you see, there is uh, counting on a figure of 40 to 60 grams per suspended solids per, solids per um, capita per, per day. That's the sort of normal uh, rate. We can see that it is becoming a huge problem on what to do with this uh, produced sludge. Now, this uh, is a quantitative aspect. What about the qualitative aspect? You know, probably all of you, that uh, sludge has two names. It's uh, sludge and biosolids. Now, why the one and why is the other? The biosolids is the concept based on the green big circle, which says that 99% of, uh, of sludge originating from sewage facilities or some industries which are full industries and not uh, containing toxic things, all these are, these industries are described in the uh, urban waste for the directive as a similar, very stronger um, organic load, but still not dissimilar to the, to the uh, typical uh, sewage. Uh, we know that more than 99% is, uh, is innocent and of good value uh, material, which is uh, organic matter, basically, nitrogen, phosphorus, and other, um, uh, and other elements. Now, this is a useful product. That's why it's called biosolids, and a lot of people want to talk about biosolids and not sludge because it brings a different attitude. Okay, it, 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 the disposition is better if you talk about biosolids. It's the same thing as it's better to talk about water reclamation than to be using uh, treated efforts. Okay, it's, it's the same same thing, but under different headings, which uh, gives a different kind of uh, feeling about it. So, if you want to be optimistic about that. The good, uh, the valuable things in this life, you talk about by yourself, you talk about how to use that, and what's the more important. Of course, it's a, uh, it has a nutritious value for nitrogen and phosphorus, but I think, at least for countries like in Greece, and I don't know about uh, if it's the same in Albania, in Greece, the soils sometimes are poor in organic matter. So I, I think for us, sludge is more important as a, as a condition, a soil conditioner, rather than fertilizer. It improves the quality, the structure of the soil uh, for agriculture. And then we come to the 1%, the nasty material in the sludge, which is uh, very small in quantity, but very big in, can be very big in consequences. And of course, traditionally, uh, for uh, years, when you talk about manure uh, or um, sludge from uh, agricultural activities or um, animal farms, uh, you don't have that, that much. Very few cases you have some kind of, uh, except for pathogen maybe, uh, other materials like that. So it was very safe to use it in moderation. <coughs> so when we talk about sewage, this 1% becomes crucial. It has two, rather three um, elements which are, of course, seven. The pathogens, because the normal treatment of the treatment plant does not remove all the pathogens. Uh, it reduces it, but still has uh, 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 enough for pathogens then to, uh, to 
you know, the danger from spreading diseases. You have the heavy metals, and also, and this particularly from bigger cities or cities which receive also substantial amounts of industrial efforts or chemical from chemical factories, you may have also some uh, uh, micro, micro uh, microorganisms, organic pollutants, small in quantity but uh, be accumulating and potentially uh, create dangers. Now, okay, uh, when we talk about pathogens, we talk about bacteria, viruses, parasites, and it's something we can deal with. We know that the conventional slash treatment does not remove it, but we can think of ways, as we are, as I'll explain later on, that we can remove these pathogens and have this process of sanitization or, or, of slides so we can uh, make it pathogen free. So, this is something that can be effectively addressed uh, at the end of the pipe, at the end of the process. When we come to heavy metals, and uh, the directive focuses basically on, uh, on six or seven metals. Okay. Uh, in Greece, uh, because we have, um, in addition to the six metals that I mentioned, the directive, we also added chromium because we are very sensitive about uh, chromium in Greece. So these are the seven metals that uh, we think that they should, they should be regulated. And uh, the unfortunate thing about that is that uh, there are other existing small quantities or in acceptable levels, or if they don't, you can't really do much about it except going back to the source, by going back to the industries that they introduce industrial efforts to the sewage network and uh, apply a very strict control. You cannot really treat sludge to remove the metals. It's not practical and feasible. So you have to make a source control uh, if you want to avoid to have this uh, problem. And of course, the emerging uh, problem that is addressed not in the existing European Union Directive of 86, but which has been addressed by several countries in Europe, and it's also in the uh, mind of the various drafts of the European Union, the third draft and also the compromise of 2010, they stop talking or mumbling about organic compounds. Some countries are more open about it, some countries say that this is an exaggeration, uh, and this is a kind of list of uh, groups of organic uh, uh, compounds that are of concern and then again like toxin metals that have to be addressed effectively by so, uh, controlling the source of this uh, material. So, pathogens, heavy metals and possibly microorganics are the constituencies, that are the things in the sludge that bother. Now what are the alternative ways for sludge management? Uh, in uh, a Western traditional plant, we can produce thick and sludge, but in Greece we don't do that. We always go to the stage of uh, the water in the sludge, so we have something like above 18 percent dry solids, between 18 and 30, 35 percent, depending on the uh, composition of the sludge and the method applied. So after that, if we forget about the um, uh, sludge in the, in the liquid phase, like thick and sludge, you can find various possibilities. One thing is landfilling it. We do land, have landfills, some type of thing, and that's unfortunate that we have landfills. Uh, because uh, I think the minister was very really right. Uh, Greece and Albania and many other countries have the uh, possibility, a big benefit of the stage skipping process. You don't have to follow the experience of other countries like Germany or Denmark or whatever going through uncontrolled landfills to control landfills and then to go to the next stage. Uh, when things, uh, if you are left behind and then the legislation or the thinking about it, you're moving from a, a, a concept of not just protecting the environment but utilizing what you've got, whether it's sewage or sludge, it's a useful material, then you don't have to repeat all the stages and go through landfill process. Of course, that's not always easy to avoid because uh, this is a tradition and also invested interest in, in, in going the, uh, uh, the, the whole path. But he was quite right in that we should think in Greece uh, with limiting the landfills and skipping this stage since this is not a viable process for either solid waste or sludge anymore and look into recycle, um, thermal uh, utilization, um, uh, thermal treatment and energy recovery or material recovery this case as a solid condition. In Greece, landfill in the sludge started being uh, it was used and still is being used, but it poses huge problems.
because of the new concepts, whoever is responsible for the landfill does not accept sludge anymore. He thinks that sludge, because it's more watery, 18, 20% solids than the uh, typical uh, solid waste, that they will do in harm. Also, they suspect, uh, uh, suspect the quality of the sludge. So, there are many cases where you have waste management plants producing these dewatered sludge, and then a, a, a fellow competent authority, a neighbor uh, in an administration language, does not accept it because he, he thinks that you know he should accept only uh, um, uh, solid waste or sludge, which is 40 percent or 50 percent uh, solid, uh, which means that you cannot really put the water sludge. There. So there are many cases where you have waste management plants producing water sludge, and this is being mounted in piles in the nearby fields, and that's not a very acceptable situation. So we have to move away from that. And the possibilities are really either thermal uh, treatment and, uh, and, and of uh, energy recovery by incineration, by using it as a, a fuel in um, industries like uh, cement factories. We found that cement factories are very good clients for that. And as I will explain later, half of the sludge produced in Greece is really uh, used even by cement factories. And a good profit for the uh, factories, of course, but. Uh, if you're in a weak position, you have to accept sometimes with a small black bill. You give them fewer, yes. not only for free, but you have to pay for that uh, deal. Uh, but still, it's a, it's a way out, it's a, it's a good use. The other thing is, of course, agricultural use of sludge. And uh, we're talking about recorded and properly functioning agricultural use. Uh, I will uh, go to the previous speaker who said about all this. Uh, uh, things that have to be taken into consideration, responsibilities, a way of recording the whole thing, uh, so that you know what's happening. In Greece, we don't know whether there is some kind of unrecorded land uh, agricultural use of sludge, but this is dangerous. You know, this thing that you, you leave your sludge on the side, you take your back, and the farmer comes and takes it, and nobody knows what happened. Okay, uh, This may provide a solution in some cases, but it's also uh, cause for concern because many problems may arise from that. So we're talking about uh, legally administered and, and properly functioning and properly recorded and carefully monitored uh, agricultural use. And then we have the two possibilities. Either like sludge subjected to conventional treatment, which means maybe digestion, aerobic or anaerobic, and then dewatering, which of course leaves certain pathogens. Or you can move into a situation where you want to have a free, a pathogen free sludge. Because, as you know, the uh, directive, the existing directive, which in Greece has been implemented since 1991, does not really specify a method of treatment. It talks about properly or adequately treated sludge. What does that mean? Nobody knows. They don't tell you any limitations about pathogens or a level of treatment. So everybody thinks that it should be along the lines of a properly digested and, and mesophilic uh, anaerobic digestion or aerobic digestion, uh, and then uh, dewatering. But that leaves several thousand coliforms per kilogram still in the sludge. And there you have these limitations in the land application of the sludge. You say, uh, animal grazing, no, for several months. Uh, dig it inside the soil. Um, not for fruits or vegetables that come into contact with the soil is not allowed. You have to wait for several months before you apply it on the soil. Uh, you are not allowed to do it in the forest, you're not allowed to do it in parks or even land reclamation. So the restrictions both in the, in the scope of land using and also in the terms of land use. You can uh, you can't really be so free to do it. So the idea is that because of the pathogens. So the idea is, what if we remove the pathogens through a sanitation process, either by composting or light treatment, or drying, or pasteurization and another process, and then you have a class A, as they call it in the States, class A sludge, which is pathogen-free, and then which can be used without all these restrictions, either in the terms of application or in the scope. You can use it for forest, you can use it for landscape, you can use it for park. So a certain um, kind of distinction must be made. What's uh, the experience in Europe? Previous uh, speaker talked about that. 
there is a, a growing kind of use of land agriculture, not without problems. I think several years ago, I think in Sweden, if I'm not mistaken, I think there are people here who know better, who learn about it. There was a big concern from the farmers about rumors that maybe there's a problem with the agricultural use of, of blood because of the microorganisms and all that. Um, so it's not a very easy road. Farmers have every, every right to be suspicious. Farmers have every right to protect their own interests, their own products from any kind of malicious or well-meaning um, disrepute of their products. So be very careful about it. And have very clear procedures about how you go about it. Something that is ending also gaining momentum is the thermal treatment of, of the sludge. As you can see, the top uh, light blue, which is uh, from say 15%, is coming substantially more. And of course, there is a decrease in the land uh, landfill use. Of course, that's an average of the, uh, the European Union. Uh, and we can see some countries which prefer more um, land application, the dark green two countries which are more keen on thermal uh, processes, which is the, the light, uh, the light green uh, at the bottom. Uh, so, of course, there are many variations in, in countries. There are some countries which apply um, landscaping to a much bigger extent than that, even 80 or 90 uh, percent. So the general, uh, the general conclusion is that um, landfilling has been reduced from about 40 to 20 percent now. Uh, agriculture has an increase from 40 to 55 percent, despite all the problems and difficulties and concerns. There is an increase from about 15 to 25 percent incineration, and of course we know that uh, anyway the Mediterranean was not allowed in any case, but now uh, it's a European Union legislation from 2000, and you're not allowed to, to, dip, uh, to uh, dispose uh, sludge into the sea, which was a practice used mainly in the UK and Spain. Uh, in the past, but now it has stopped. So, as I said, the main, uh, the main uh, challenges are the limitations due to heavy metals and the limitations due to pathogens. And as I said before, the first one is either you have it or you don't have it in your sludge. If you don't, you're not satisfied with heavy metals in your sludge and it's beyond, above the accepted level, you have to go back and make an efficient control of the, all the inputs to your waste to the treatment plant. <coughs> if your limitations are due to pathogens, you can think about methods of sanitization of the sludge in order to avoid or overcome this problem. Then the next slide is a bit what is happening now in Greece and until now, and what is the rationale of the new uh, decision, of the new draft uh, Ministerial Decree, which is a bit more than a draft because there's been uh, subjected to consultation, extension consultation, we have a few hundred pages of comments, uh, more than a year, uh, with various ministries, with various authorities, and also the wider public. So now the decree has been signed by the Minister of Environment and is on the pipeline to be signed by the other ministers. And then uh, <coughs> this is the new kind of uh, legislation which goes beyond the existing uh, European Union Directive of uh, 1986, which was implemented in 1991. What was the idea of the, of the first approach to the sludge? We're saying that we can determine the maximum uh, levels, if we can accept our intake levels uh, of, um, of certain metals. You know, how much in a lifetime you can take without having adverse effects. Then you have to evaluate the transport routes, how that can reach the organism, through the animal, directly through the thing. From that, to go there and determine limitations in, of the sludge, uh, of the metals in the sludge and the soil. Then determine the annual loading values, if you say that we're going to use this for 20 years. So at the end of the 20 years, you have to approach this uh, limit. And then you can set up your um, uh, your standards. This is the approach, and then based on that, as you all know, there are these uh, limits for the uh, for the um, uh, for the soil uh, in the existing. And if you press the other button before, I think, which was yeah, giving the 
uh, the metal per, 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 per year, the application uh, load, and also there was a, 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 a kind of a limitation for the sludge, uh, for the metal content of the sludge. What was the experience in Greece about that? The experience in Greece was that there were several weaknesses. The one is trying to make it a kind of uh, inexpensive process. All you need is the conventional sludge treatment. Then you take precautionary measures. Then you're based on concepts which say, yes, I know that the metals will accumulate on the soil over the next 20 years, but I will be careful not to exceed a certain level, which is determined by if I have so much in the soil that will go to the root of the plant, then to the plant, then to the consumer, and then I know that the consumer cannot take more than that in the lifetime, which sometimes is very vague and not very certain. And people are not very uh, enthusiastic about it. It may be a cheaper way, but they were not buying it, let's put it like that in Greece. And then you have the other countries in the Europe, which in the meantime developed more stringent <coughs> regulations. And then you have this phenomenon of uh, informal circulation of norms. What does that mean? That means that maybe the European Union establishes a minimum level with a directive of 86, but then you see other countries of the European Union going more ambitious about it and more uh, um, stringent measures. And then if you are a Greek farmer, you say, wait a minute, okay, I know that in Greece, which is following the European Union, this is acceptable. But why do the Germans, Dutch, Danish, Swedish, don't like that? and they think that this is not safe enough and they put more stringent regulations. So this is, he starts doubting the validity of the European Union legislation where it's now. And then the same European Union is discussing for at least 12 years the amendment of this uh, directive. And I must say that it's not a very good show and a very good record for the European Union to discuss it for 12 years or more, 14 years. I remember in 1999, I was, in this, I was asked by the European Union to, uh, to give a lecture in, in, in Italy about problems around slides. That was uh, uh, the beginning of this uh, attempts, the first draft, the second draft, third draft, and in 2010 we had uh, re-evaluation. But there don't seem to be an agreement. But there is discussion that it's not, the existing legislation is not adequate. Some countries have rejected it, and the European Union is discussing it. In this framework, in Greece, we thought that instead of waiting for a new uh, European Union legislation and directive, we should move ahead along the new information that we have and make it uh, more strict. Because farmers were not willing to accept the uncertainties of the existing situation. So we had very, very few uh, kind of interesting parts. And the second thing was in the directive, the way it was transported to people, low, the whole business of, business of Permitting responsibilities was a messy business. Cost uh, allocation, who is paying for what, who is responsible for what, how many stamps you have to take, 3, 20, 40 stamps. So nobody could bother. There were two very serious weaknesses. So we tried to address it with a new concept, which is uh, based on the zero accumulation or approaching the zero accumulation uh, concept. We said, okay. The ideal situation would be that, despite that I put sludge on the soil, the heavy metals on the soil do not accumulate. Because the rate at which I apply is equal to the rate that is taken up by the needs of the crop. So you have zero accumulation, you have a long term then uh, sludge application. Of course you need much wider uh, areas, okay? And you need probably a, a much lower loading rate and a stricter uh, limitations on the on the on the on the, uh, on the metal content. Incidentally, this is also in the mind of the European Union, and also an indirect way by making it more difficult for sludge to be used in land due to reduced metal concentrations, is to put bigger pressure on industries to do something about uh, pretreating their industrial reference so they can reduce the content of the metals in, in the sludge. So, uh, well, this is, uh, uh, if you just press on the things, it, this is the concept I just uh, described. And of course, we came, the European Union came up with, um, uh, with different levels. Let me mention that, for example, in terms to um, uh, 
uh, to, to this table, we, we adopted in the decree the 2015 uh, figures, more or less, except from chromium, which is a lower, it's about 500 in our case, but the rest are just, and zinc is 2,500, but the rest is just the middle column, so this is what we really adopted in Greece. And uh, when it comes to the loading rates, uh, yeah, the, uh, the loading rates, which was uh, in the third uh, draft of the European Union, in view of some discussions which took place in Europe in 2010, we have doubled this phase. The first uh, column, which is the 2015 figures, uh, in most cases we have, like for carbon, we have 0 0.03. For uh, chromium 3, for copper 3, um, mercury 0.03, and, and so on. And uh, a bit increase, uh, slightly higher than that, and that is because the experience of the European Union discussion between the third draft and the 2010 uh, gathering and, and consensus is that this the figures can be slightly increased. So, Let's move to, and this is the, the also the, uh, the what you have to have in the in the soil, which is of course related to the pH of the soil. And one uh, we follow this table of the European Union, with the exceptions of the of the first uh, column again, which is between five and six pH. And it seems that this concern about this low pH uh, that you should really have a very low concentration of metals in the soil uh, was um, probably. Uh, not uh, well documented and the figures that you adopted, the European Union seems to adopt is slightly higher in the first uh, column, that is about the soil properties. The next one, please. So the prospect now is, as I said, either through this uh, approach, either to, to use it for soil conditioning or energy recovery and uh, <coughs> The choice of method depends, of course, on the economics on the, uh, and on the scale. We feel that for big cities like Athens or Thessaloniki, with over a million, Athens has three million, Thessaloniki, more than one million people, it's a bit difficult to produce a soil conditioner which is going to be packed and then spread all over Greece uh, as, a, as, a, as a product. Uh, so we opened uh, thermal processes then, an energy recovery. But the, the soil conditioner production, the uh, triple of sludge for, for soil is more appropriate for the medium size and small size, size waste management plants around this. Uh, I'll go very quickly about uh, our involvement as a, as a university, as a lab, in a survey of uh, some uh, 15 uh, to 20 treatment plants uh, about the nutritional value of nitrogen and phosphorus of the sludge, which seems to be among um, normal levels. In phosphorus, we see sometimes. Uh, high variations depending on whether the treatment plant is making biological phosphorus or not. That increases a lot the cost of phosphorus. And uh, also we made, uh, uh, let me move to the metals. If you can down. Yeah, the next one. Yes. Then we took the seven metals of concern and made a survey of the treatment plants to see at what levels uh, we are comparing to the various limitations. The top lines are, is the, the top top line is the uh, EPA, the American EPA limits. Uh, the dotted line is the old, is existing uh, legislation of the European Union. And the two lower uh, lines are what is presented for 2015 and 2025 as a limitation. I told you in Greece we adopted the values for 2015, which is the <coughs> The lines, the factored lines, uh, the third from the top. We see that, for example, for nickel in most of these uh, treatment plants, even in the last one, which represents Athens, and of course has a very heavy industrial uh, input into the sewer system, we can meet this uh, criteria uh, fairly safe. We did the same thing, if you go to the next uh, few slides, we did the same thing with various other um, metals. Zinc is for some reason uh, in high uh, levels in, in the wastewater and sludge in, in Greece. So we see that we may have some problems with, uh, with zinc uh, in at least 50% of the, of, the, of the cases. Our limit is 2,500, a bit higher than the uh, 
uh, recommended by the European Union. So still, with the exception of few treatment plans, in most cases, we can meet this uh, level. Uh, the next one is for, uh, for chromium, with, which is a Greek uh, legislation of 600, 500, and we can see that we can meet it. Again, you see the Athens treatment plan, which shows exactly that a big city with a lot of industries of this, this, uh, if we do this uh, um, analysis now, the situation will be better because we don't have so many industries around Athens anymore because of the financial crisis that closed it down. So this is the benefit to the environment. But I'm not much about that. Uh, but we see that in most cases we can make the problem in the concentration. The next one, uh, the same uh, holds for cadmium, the five grams, uh, and the same for uh, for copper and um, and lead. So what we were trying to do is that if we're going to establish not the top levels, which are the existing legislation, but something lower along the lines with other European countries and along the lines of the draft recommendations of the European Union, we want to see what does it mean in, in practical terms in this. Because we adopt a very strict uh, levels and then find out that all your treatment plants are uh, producing unacceptable sludge is not really a solution. We found out that at least 50% of the workers in the plants of this slash could be treated, uh, could be subjected to these new strict regulations without really uh, significant uh, problems. So that was a big decision, a, a good finding for deciding to adopt uh, this uh, uh, level. Uh, from some, the start of some big in, uh, in large scale urban uh, centers uh, that cannot meet that. We think again for uh, other reasons also that uh, thermal treatment is a better process and you don't have to do the same kind of requirements uh, as uh, in the case of the land application. And I close it very quickly with a, a, in the list of, of uh, kind of uh, methods, if you can go to the previous one. In the new uh, legislation, we also um, try to, to make a combination of norms, like what are the concentrations that we have to meet. What are the concentrations of salmonella, for example, for pathogen-free sludge? But also, along the, uh, in the same legislation, we also prescribe methods for us. It's a good combination because if you just say, "Give me that results," and I don't care how you're going to do it, then you have to put a lot of emphasis on the monitoring and the uh, compliance uh, checking because you don't know what the other guy is doing. The only thing you know is that you can go and sample. Uh, take a sample of the slides and analyze it and see what's happening. That takes a very expensive and very uh, painstaking uh, process of, uh, of um, uh, compliance uh, checking. If you prescribe a method also, then you're more sure because you know that he's doing proper treatment, drying for example. So normally he should produce the right quality of uh, slides when it comes to pathogens and you can be more relaxed about your monitoring program, put less emphasis there. But anyway, so this is a description of what we consider as <coughs> sanitization methods, methods that produce uh, free of pathogens, which is, uh, can be used not only in agriculture, but also landscaping and other uh, uses, parks and also, but also in agriculture without any restrictions about the type of crop or about the season and about waiting before uh, harvesting and whatever. All these methods uh, are taken also from the, what is suggested by the European Union. You know? But basically, uh, 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 the concept is in the next slide is a combination of four factors basically temperature, pH, um, moisture, and time. Increased temperature <coughs> is killing pathogens. Increased pH is killing pathogens. Reduced moisture is not very good for pathogens. And of course, time, the longer you, uh, you wait, is, uh, is also beneficial because, uh, because most of the pathogens are. As you know, pathogens are not in the free environment, they are in a hostile environment. They're very, they find a very cozy place inside uh, your body or an animal body. But when you are uh, ejected outside the environment, this is a hostile environment because the longer they stay there, they will die. And then we look at the various processes in terms of these combinations. Uh, we won't go, I won't go to that. And like the mesophilic digestion is not considered to be a sanitation method because it's based on a moderate temperature of 35 degrees and say 20 days of retention time. This combination is not adequate to provide sanitation. But if we look, for example, at uh, combining it with, uh, 
with storage, they're lucky we have 35 degrees treatment for seven years, but then we add very much in terms of uh, solids increase, moisture reduction due to storage, and also the time. Uh, but that means the conventional treatment followed by long term uh, storage, three, four, five months before you apply the sludge, which sometimes may have practical problems. And so uh, we can go very quickly to the uh, other processes. The thermophilic anaerobization is much better because uh, it uses an uh, increased temperature of 55 degrees and it's much more uh, effective. And um, of course, drying, if you could move to the next one, uh, drying is also based on the fact that we subject the sludge to a high degree, a high temperature of 100 degrees. Uh, and of course, we reduce the moisture to less than 10%, so this is uh, absolutely this is for thermal drying. In Greece, we favor a lot also in smaller, in smaller um, treatment plants, uh, sun drying, which is in, in a kind of uh, covered uh, uh, places. Uh, this is not accepted, this is not accepted by the degree as a sanitization method. It's cheaper, you don't need the energy because you depend on the, on the, on the soil, on the, on the, uh, on the sun but it cannot produce a pathogen free sludge. But it effectively reduces the moisture content and even more the pathogen, so it's suitable for certain types of uses. The experience in this. Athens produce about half the sludge in Greece. In Greece, we have uh, something like more than 80%, around 85% of the population is served by sewage systems and treatment plants. We have to cover the remaining 15%. Of course, this is for communities above 2,000 population equivalent in terms of the direct. So we are striving for the remaining 15% with funds from the European Union in this and the next program. Uh, but we still have a lot of treatment uh, plants, around 300 in operation, 250 300 in operation. Of course, the Italian treatment plant is in Athens, one of the biggest in, in Europe, treatment 3.5 main population equivalent, so more than one third of the uh, of, uh, population and around 50% of the sludge produced in Greece. So what's happened today is a huge amount of time with uh, more than 200 uh, tons of dry solids per day sludge produced. It's been dried to 90%, 92% uh, solid content and then it's been shipped to various places, not only in Greece but abroad also to be used by cement factories as, as a fuel. It's a costly business, as I said before, because you have um, various <coughs> costs, uh, not only in terms of the drying, uh, but also shipping and dealings and, and intermediate uh, comp authorities that have to do with the whole thing. But at least that's what's happening in, uh, in Athens, and this is going to happen in the Saloniki more than triple plan, the drying triple plan will be finished in, in a few months. Uh, so about 50% of the sludge produced is receiving thermal treatment. Of course, from two installations, so this happened to have 50% of the sludge. The rest is being uh, landfill still. And what we want to do is to promote uh, to promote other concepts of treatment, either drying or other methods in order to achieve something like 20 or 25% more of the sludge to be diverted to agricultural practices rather than landfill. For this purpose, we have allocated right now about 30 million euros within this period by 2015. There are about 10 or 15 projects that are going to be implemented uh, in the next, um, say, two or three years. Uh, and then possibly will, um, depending on the, on the new budget of the European Union cohesion of funds, we will find more funds to, to, to increase this percentage uh, even higher. To, so that in this sense we can reduce to 25-30% the slides that will be landfill at the end of 2015 or 2016. Uh, this is the solar, uh, the solar drive which is a, a very favorable, a, a lot of the communities in Greece favor this, uh, this method of drying. I said it produces good results in a, in a much cheaper way but it does not produce a sanitized, absolutely sanitized sludge. And the solid content cannot reach more than 50 to 70 uh, percent. So it's not the same thing like 90 percent of the thermal drying. And uh, yeah, let's go on, just to finish. I think we're finishing here. 
Uh, as I said, I don't have much to add. Uh, this is a situation like this, uh, to sum it up. We're producing a new decree. This decree is along the lines of the European Union thinking, uh, and also taking into consideration the latest kind of uh, developments of 2010, and also taking into consideration what other countries in Northern Europe are doing. And we feel that the old directive, as it, as it exists, does not work, for the reasons I explained. Uh, we think that all it will make things tougher, it will make things more safe and more clear about the responsibilities and procedures and with a, a favorable uh, result. And we're trying also to find money, funds from the European Union in order to um, promote these uh, this, uh, methods of um, additional slash treatment in order, as I said, to eliminate uh, or to reduce to very low levels the slides that we have to go to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your Dini exactish në sa përqim dhe ku mu të aplikoni lumin e ujra dhe të ndotura në bujësi. Dhe nga nga tjetër, sa përqim dhe lumit të produar në vit, mu të përdoret në bujësi. That's not a very detailed study, but it's a mathematical study which shows that the farmland in Greece can accommodate this amount that I'm talking about, depending also on the on the type of additional treatment. If, for example, we can provide additional treatment with basically produce pathogen uh, free slides, and we have also can extend it also to landscaping, parks, but also agricultural land. Don't forget that the medium part of this area is a huge uh, Arab uh, area, and there are many places in Greece where the soil uh, is poor in organic matter, so they, they need this. Of um, course, with the Heavy metal limitations, you have to spread it over big areas. But I, I don't think that the uh, availability of land is really the, the problem. Uh, one final thing is that it depends on the method also. For example, one of the methods of uh, sanitizing slide is lime. It's a cheap process. You don't have capital investment. You need lime, which in Greece and probably other is not very expensive, but from limestone. Uh, so it's more operational the cost due to the lime addition and doesn't have a capital cost and it's easy to, uh, an easy technology, you don't need expertise. Of course you have to be a bit careful about the type of lime that you will apply it because uh, it has to be a bit acidic or neutral and not uh, high pH already. But uh, no, I would say that uh, availability of lime is not a problem. Question there, yeah. uh, Se pari i përshëndes referencën të për e i nivelli të për një lashë fensor, për mendë gjatë referimit të besu shmërin e fermerëve në përdorimin e lumërave të përpunuar. Pse kjo besu shmëri e ullët për përdorimin e lumërave të trajtuar? Ok, where people, including farmers, of course, don't trust the government anything. For now. So you don't have really to find a good reason. It's just that you know they don't trust what the authorities uh, tell them or what the authorities verify or whatever. Uh, and I must say that Greece is belongs to this constellation of, of countries. So that's a general remark. Uh, but apart from that, there are good reasons, and I think people maybe from Scandinavia and Sweden then would have a better picture of the concerns of the farmers. But I, I could just make some. I mean, in Greece, it's so strong that they don't trust the whole administration. The whole administration. Let's say, in uh, uh, the compliance uh, uh, that uh, is one of the reasons. The, the, the other reason, which is connected to that, is uh, slander, lies. You, know, you go to the media, or somebody comes up and says, you know, using slags in corn, for example, will poison everybody, or your animals, and all that. How do you deal with that? Yeah, that kind of, you cannot easily deal with that. And it's competition. It's competition because, you know, if you use, for example, in Holland, all right, if you take a, a lawyer from Holland to, to support you in a case like that, he's going to put you in trouble. Holland produces huge amounts of manure. That's so much manure they want to export it. Why the hell should be interested in using sludge for agriculture? 
Why should we support you for that? Of course, manure is a clean product. But we go uh, this extreme and saying, well, manure is safe, but slash, mm, I don't know. That's why they say for example, but they can afford to do that. Is another thing where you can be um, uh, skeptical about it. Uh, I don't want to say more about it because I think maybe the next president could, could add a bit more of that. Because I just remember, um, uh, as I said, a few years, uh, several years ago, uh, when the Swedish farmers had made a decision, and I want to be corrected if I don't sound right, a decision that they were not, not going to use sludge in agriculture because something in the media appeared, somebody said that it's dangerous and all that, and they said we're not going to play games with that. Either the country guarantees us that this is safe and will cover us from any possible losses out of us using the sludge, or otherwise we stop using it. So it's a, it's a sensitive area because you grow a product which goes on uh, to the market, and you have to be very careful about how this product will be promoted and not uh, kind of uh, accused of not being proper in the moment.